Assalamu alaikum, herzlich willkommen zur Vorführung des Filmes Gender Me, Islam and Homosexuality von Nefise Özkal Lorenzen. Wir als Imrush Goethe Moschee, das sind einmal ich, Tugay Sadaj und Seydan Atej, haben heute zu Gast Nefise eben, die Filmemacherin, und Imam Dai Abdullah aus den USA, einem schwulen Imam, der in diesem Film als ein wichtiger Teil mitwirkt. Anschließend gibt es noch eine, eine Diskussion zu diesem Film und ich wünsche euch und Ihnen viel Spaß und viel Spannung bei der, beim kommenden Video. Ich bin Shahrazad, As a gay mom, talking to people who are gay and lesbian, my role for them is to help them develop their own inner voice. My mother knows uh, something about my shows, but she just doesn't know I'm gay. Many gay and lesbians are silenced, and it's very important that they open up. This is me. <laughs> Beautiful. And from the shirt, you can see that he's maybe not like other boys. If I tell you inside me, a woman. W what will you tell me? Thank you, Father, Mother, God, our Creator, in bringing us together again. Continue to protect our hearts so that we may love. I'm afraid that uh, if my family learn my gay identity, this will be the end uh, of the relationship with my family. And I also, I don't want to make my mom upset because I adore her. As a gay mom, I have to speak out for all people because oppression of one is oppression of all. قصة ألف ليلة وليلتين وهي قصة أولئك الذين هربوا من أجل حبهم I came out when I was a teenager to my parents, so I had that, own, that experience. But when I went to China as an adult to study Chinese, it was there one of my classmates introduced me to Islam, asked me if I knew anything about it, and then invited me to the Cow Street Mosque there in Beijing. And it was there that I got the impression I didn't understand the Arabic at the time, but the Chinese made perfect sense. And then starting the prayer process, when I would pray, I felt welcomed into it because I could just surrender all of my questions. I was not supplicating, but I was able to surrender those things. And when I would let it go and say, Allah, these are my issues and let them go. When I would sit back out of sujood, then it would be the process. Sometimes I would get that inspiration, that answer would come. And if it didn't come, I was at such great inner peace, I could wait. And so that made a big difference from my other segues into studying other types of religion. So Islam became the one that made me more whole. Thank you very much. Mm, and now to um, Nefize um, about the movie itself. Um, how was it, uh, um, was it easy or hard to find the, um, Yeah, main, main, how do you say? Not actors, but how do you even say that? Yeah, storytellers or characters? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So was it hard to find the main storytellers and trying to convince them to show their faces or how was it? Mm -hmm. um, as I told you, I have started to make this film uh, just uh, right after 9-11. Uh, so, uh, and then the film was finished uh, 2008. So I spent lots of time to do that. So this is my kind of longest uh, film <laughs> uh, when, it time, when it comes to you know, spending time. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, at the very beginning, so uh, Islam and uh, homosexuality issue was not an issue in Norway. Uh, I think Norwegian uh, media or Norwegian television was not really interested in it. Uh, because they were kind of thinking like we have to find out, we have to find out, you know, how we are going to deal with our problems now. Why should we work with the immigrant problems type of thing? So that was the approach. And when I was actually pitching the film to some of the TV stations, 
And that's what they told me. Oh, you know, this is not a Norwegian story. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I had lots of uh, hinders at the very beginning. Uh, but I, when I really felt that I, I'm dedicated to that and I will do that and suddenly everything just opened. And it was very interesting how I found Imam Daya Abdullah. I read about him in a book, uh, which is called Islamic Homosexualities. Uh, but it is not easy to find the person in the book and find the telephone number because at that time he didn't have any Zoom or uh, WhatsApp or such things or Facebook. So uh, for, I, I don't know how I found it, but I found the uh, telephone number of uh, Imam uh, Muhsin Hendrix from uh, South Africa, uh, from the, probably from uh, the publishing company or something like that. And I called him, but there was another person, a woman took the telephone and she said that I'm, uh, I'm his ex. And then she gave me his new telephone number and I talked to him and then finally I reached Dayu. So, you know, when you want to reach a person, I think there are maybe four or five uh, layers that you have to move. So when I uh, talked to Dayu, and I think we talked like one hour or something, and then our uh, conversation uh, was full of laughter. And then I really wanted to bring his joy and his laughter in the film because I think, and the other goal that I had in this film is that I, I, I really didn't want to make a film about victims. I wanted to make a film about, you know, people who are suffering, that is for sure, but they have love, joy, uh, visions, and, and suffering. So that was actually, Dai's laughter is a part of my manuscript. That is what I loved about the movie. It's not about, oh no, those poor homosexual people. It's obviously it shows that there are, it is hard, it can be hard to be a gay Muslim or LGBT Muslim, but we are strong people and we fight for our cause. And I'm very thankful for that. And also just one thing I just wanted to add, the book Islamic Homosexualities was actually um, one of my sources for my assignment this um, for the university. So I'm happy to hear that. Oh, great. <laughs> again and find you there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think there are some more questions to guys. What we can... Yeah, it's kind of hard to find them because the thing is always switching around. If... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And while, while you can uh, find the questions, I have a question and maybe you can find the other ones. Or did you find some? I found something by okay. Christina Kamp. Uh, she asks, Daye, do you know the Masjid al Rabia Mosque in Chicago? Uh, it's open for LGBT youth. Yes, I am familiar with the, the mosque. Uh, I've visited them on several occasions uh, before COVID, of course. Um, and I have participated with them in some of their online activities too. And it's a, a wonderful place. Um, the last time I was with them, they were meeting at the, the Gay and Lesbian Community Center. Um, so that was where they were having their meetings. And I believe that they do participate in a, uh, with one of the churches that, that hosts them. Uh, but it's a wonderful community. And I think that as the different uh, communities around the United States and North America have grown, they've partnered with Christian and Jewish um, centers so that they would have the space um, that they can be consistently at a particular place, and then they grow from there. Uh, one in particular I do give mention to, and is online, is El Tawhi Juma, which is out of Toronto. So if you get an opportunity, if you're unable to find the location, try them because they're online and they use a Zoom system there too, and people from all over the world participate there as well. But. Um, just, just one last thing, the, I, I'm executive director of Mecca Institute, and our goal is to help um, progressive Muslims and Muslims generally 
through a form of re-education about Islam. So um, my goal is, we have a chaplaincy program and our goal is to bring people into the school and to graduate them so that they can go out and open more inclusive mosques around the, the, around the North America and hopefully around the world in, in, um, in future time. So that we don't have to look for places because I get emails from people all the time who say, well, is there a mosque near me? Well, the nearest mosque to me is a two day drive for me, or if it's a, it's a real trip to go there. And I like to see more mosques where people would, you know, uh, would be much closer to them so that they would have a center where they could feel at home and welcomed. Thank you very much. Um, Mickey, yes. huh? There's somebody writing in Netherlands, and I can understand it. I was <laughs> laughing. <laughs> uh, John and Juno found each other, and they are both Dutch living in Berlin. Um, glad for you. No. And uh, Mickey Mackenrod asks a question about the camera. I love about a question about camera. I love about your film that many times characters are so natural as if there was no camera, especially in the dancing scene, did you plan, especially the dancing screen, uh, scene, my God. Did you plan that or did it just happen? Uh, you, you remember the dancing scene, it was definitely not planned. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and both of the actually, the dancing scenes, they were not planned and it happened, I think. Uh, one of the things about the documentary is like, uh, you just become friends. I mean, like Dai and I, uh, we are always chatting and I mean, we have known each other many years and we have established a friendship which will go until we are 90 or I don't know, 80. <laughs> so it's, it's, there is one thing about this documentary uh, film is uh, because you, go into people's life and you go into people's um, sorrow and joy. And I think it is, it, uh, it teaches you something of being human. And then it's the respect of the other's lives and you come so close. Uh, and it's not only like, you know, as a, as a friend, you also come closer to people's story, stories, but there is something about the existence of camera also gives some kind of a magic. Uh, these two dance scenes, it was, it just happened. And yeah. um, I'm, I, I'm so happy about these scenes. They, they are really great. Well, just the music, you know, people, in their lives, they find music helps them break, um, have that, I call it that pregnant pause where it's, everything is going okay, then all of a sudden music comes and you're like, yes, let's express this. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing to do. Um, and that, that's exactly what happened. The music was sounding good to everyone and we just started to dance. That was part of the process. Um, and the sharing part is so important. I, I like to uh, show that I dance is because many people don't see bears in our, in our logo, in our community, having fun. They think that everyone who's gay has to be, you know, 140 pounds, you know, or, you know, 200 pounds looking like a ruffian, whatever. And they don't expect that people who have different diverse bodies can also have fun. We're human beings, we're people. And I've never felt out of being my gay self, because I've always been in with people. So I've never, it's like now in COVID, that because I like myself, I can be alone and not be lonely. So the same way in my community, I'm, I like myself and other people like me too, so I'm not alone. <laughs> we definitely love you. <laughs> yes, I love you, all of you. <laughs> That's also a great aspect about the gay community. Thank you very much for that, about being that either the twinky or hunky guy, you know, the skinny or muscled guy. That's not the that's not the only proper gay. And that's what I love about Berlin, because Berlin is also so diverse. And the mascot of Berlin is a bear. 
mm-hmm. and I'm a bear, so that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. There's a, co- a comment uh, from Samia Hada Maha Said to Guy. I think this is very important about the mothers. This is the last one. Yes, I was about to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I find it very I find it very important to see the import to see the importance of support through the mothers. So they have to be courageous and not allow other men to hurt anyone, especially homosexuals or lesbians. A lot of women don't dare to show themselves so clearly. He has a great mom. Yes, in, in the film, actually, there are two moms. And the first is the mom of uh, Emre, the, the one that you see, you don't see with the mask. And, uh, and he loves his mother, definitely. Uh, and I'm sure the mother knows about his uh, sexual uh, preference, but they play that game that they, they play that it doesn't exist. But the other mother uh, that we have seen in the film is also the mother of the other uh, drag queen. And uh, she was very supportive. So, so in the film, I wanted to see two different mothers, uh, but uh, definitely uh, the mother that uh, we have seen in the film, she's supporting and I think it is very important. Uh, role model for the other mothers, other Turkish mothers or other mothers in general. Definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah, there are other um, messages in the Q&A, especially many, many thank, thanking messages. So, so they are thanking you for making the movie and being part for that. And we also thank you. It's a um, great honor. Thank you. I have a question to Daye. Daye, there was a very strong sentence for me when when you you uh, you were singing. I fear what you are doing in the name of God. This yes. was one of the part of the song what you yeah were singing and it touched me uh, a lot and uh, reminds me what happened in the last weeks and months and in the last years. And Nefisa anyway mentioned that she started singing about this movie or started with this movie in, after 9-11. So fear is a very important issue. And this sentence is, was very strong for me. Can you tell us something about that fear, what you are going to do in the name of God? Well, that, that song, it, it, it goes like this. It says, I, I don't fear what you do in the name of Yahweh the Jewish uh, name of God. I don't fear about, um, I don't fear God for Christianity and I don't fear Allah, but I fear what people who say that these are your gods, what you will do to me. Because people then become God and then uh, decide to be the punisher or the determiner for people that that they don't like. So it's, it's, those are the things which makes us, um, not, you know, there's some things when I stand in awe of our creator, uh, you know, <laughs> like that, but then there's also the fear, the ah, uh, you know, the, the shock of that. And I think that we have to work on that part so that people better understand that there is no real difference between us. Our diversity is okay because our creation is, is okay. So we should not fear our God, but we should fear how we think God is. And if we can just get to understand that the same thing in different sizes, styles, colors, and all of that, as the Quran speaks, and um, you would be familiar with Surah Rome 22, it says we're created in different tongues and colors so that we can become uh, better to learn from each other. And I always have taught that Tongues and colors, of course, is languages and races. But then when we come to the other part, the internal part, our tongues are our tastes and styles. I like something sweet, you like something sour, you know, that kind of thing. But then the colors are our our personality temperaments. Some of us tend to be sad and blue, or very yellow as a coward, green and envy, red and anger, you know, dark of heart, that kind of thing. So when you put all those outer and inner things together, 
then I can understand how our creator, Allah, can have 8 billion people and none of us are the same. And when we look at that, that really means Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. God is the greatest. And when we stand back like that, those other little things should not make a difference. Thank you very much. Um, there's another message by Yunus Meyerink, I think it is. Assalamu alaikum, watching from the Netherlands. My gratitude and respect to all of you. I'm a school principal in an Islamic school. I think, hopefully, we as Muslims are in the middle of making a change. Even if some Muslims, uh, some Muslim people will need time to get used to the fact that LGBT peoples, uh, people are a reality and that it is possible to reunite both worlds, being a gay person and a Muslim at the same time, and that it, it, is, that it is not up to us to judge other people. That's what I would like to teach our students and talk about with them. Is it possible to stay in contact with one of you to talk about the way, the ways, how to do this and where to start? Because of course our students, children, etc., can have these feelings themselves as well. And then I want them to know that it's our duty as an Islamic ummah to embrace them instead of pushing them away. May Allah keep you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can I say something about that? Uh, after I finished the trilogy, I have started uh, something called uh, uh, gender educator workshops. And that is the reason that I have translated these three films in many languages. All the three films, they are in six different languages, including uh, German, Turkish, uh, Indonesian, uh, Arabic, and etc. And uh, the one which is about Islam, Islam and feminism, I think it has like 13 different sub subtitles. And the reason I really worked on it because I wanted that these, these films will be screened in different countries with different activists and they can also screen it actually, I mean, sometimes underground, sometimes, you know, uh, just ordinary schools. Uh, so uh, definitely if he is interested, so he can contact us. And this gender education system is like we have this booklet and I'm, uh, I really believe that the change will start with the youth and the, the, the way that we can approach to youth is not only like, you know, preaching to them how to do it, but playing with them. And what we do is in these uh, workshops, we screen the film and then afterwards we divide the audience in small groups and the audience get uh, very interesting questions, very like uh, science fiction questions even like they, they can, uh, some, sometimes they can just imagine what will happen to Dayu and they uh, in a way interpret and how Dayu was when he was a kid. So these type of, you know, role playing they do, uh, the, the young people. So, uh, and after they work in groups and they come together again uh, uh, to the venue and then they make a sketch, like five minute sketch about their, um, how they interpret the question. And in these communications and something happens, you know, some magical wor words come, some, something happens and I always say, oh, I wish I knew that I could have had it in my film. So I really believe in the, uh, creativity of the audience so uh so if absolutely if he's interested so he can also uh contact me about this gender educator workshops uh and he can uh, screen the films to to his students uh, yes i'm open to being in contact please pass on my email address to anyone who would like um, to contact me, uh, but I'm going to have to pause out. I'm, I have an appointment in about 45 minutes, so I'm going to have to bow out. And I want to thank you all for having me, and it's been a wonderful experience once again to be with you for the first time, the, the panel, and to again see you, uh, Nethis. It's always great. So uh, continue to everyone, and um, it's been a great success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sayran, you are muted. 
I was muted. No, no, Seyran is muted. Teze, du bist... Ah, yes, yes, sorry, sorry. Daya, Daya, don't, don't go. Please, let me say something. Oh, he's away. Before, yeah. yeah, before you go for, for you and for, for the audience, we, we would love to in, invite you to come to Berlin next year and um, be a part of uh, our Juma and uh, hold the hutbah so, uh, for a pray. And this is what we can um, uh, say to our audience. We try to realize that, um, uh, so do our network go forward. And uh, also, also with your new book, we will see you on Zoom or uh, in real in Berlin or somewhere. Okay, and thank you so much for joining us to, tonight. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome, and thank you yeah. too. Yeah. God bye. bless you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Yes, we don't have any. Oh yeah, Murat says, my great Murat says, thank you so much for your commitment to all of you. Really touching. We have to spread the message of love to everyone. Let's do that. We have to. <laughs> um, we, will, we will spread the message all together. <laughs> yes. Also, Miki says, I love a Tawhid Juma circle. One can... One can find them on Facebook to all the people who are listening. If you're interested, you can find them on Facebook. Other than that, I don't think we have new questions by the audience. We've answered them all. Yes. Um, thank you very much. May, yeah, thank you very much. But we should say that there are two other uh, films, movies, and uh, of your of uh, Nefis' uh, trilogy, as we mentioned, and we will please um, check our homepage and uh, check our newsletters. We will go on showing the movies and uh, excuse uh, us again for the quality of Zoom. We are very sorry about that, but we will try our best and uh, we will try to show the movie in our mosque, for example another time or try to do it better with the techniques, find another way where we can show the movie in a better quality because I know this movie and I watched them many times and I know how much more it touched somebody if you have the quality. Mm. And uh, Nefise, I, I could imagine that it hurts you when you see this <laughs> quality as a filmmaker and I said, oh my God, I, Hopefully she's not watching you because she's not horrible. <laughs> so what we, we chat uh, behind uh, uh, in the time while the other ones uh, were watching this movie. And uh, believe me, it hurts me also, like you too. It hurts me too. But yes, we will do our best and um, for the next time. Thank you very much for invitation. Yeah. And I'm looking yeah. forward to screen uh, also the new film about yeah. Seyran Atesh. Yeah. Sex oh, revolution and Islam uh, in yeah, mosque, yeah. and I hope Looking it will happen in 2021. Yeah, we are praying for that. Yes, <laughs> thank you. So, so, guys, so I give up to you for now coming to the end, or if there are some other questions from the audience. If there are no more um, questions, I'd like to thank you all for. Yeah. yeah being here and being part of the discussion. We had a great night, I think. The movie was great. Thank you again. Thank and, you very much. Thank you. I'm going to be uh, that guy now that is also um, advertising his own podcast. If you're interested in queer Muslim life ah, in yeah. Germany and also in the Islamic world in general, you can listen to the podcast Queer Almanistan on Spotify and Deezer and Podigier. And yes, that's that. If you are in, interested in further queerness in Islam, Wait, is it in English or German? Uh, in general, it is in German. But I've recorded a um, a an English episode with Leah, 
And okay, uh, I love to listen to the English one. Yes, I will send it to you. I will. I I would will release it this week or next week. I'll have to see because I have Great. to. Cut. But yes, and also to the audience and you, Nefisa, if you know people who'd like to be part of the podcast for just one episode, please tell me. <laughs> Definitely, I will. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Nefisa. So Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Danke, Lea. Lea, thank you for the help the, behind of all the people are somewhere, somebody who is doing the, the very important job. And this is Lea tonight. Lea, thank you for the support, the technical support. Nothing will, uh, will work without you. Danke. <laughs>